Hi there everybody, Tover Welsh here for VideoHive.net and VisualFXTuts.com. We're going to be checking out the paint palette today and uh, kind of finding out how it works and what all this crap over here does. So we're going to be using the paint workspace and first let's look at our brushes. If you use uh, Photoshop at all, you know about brushes when you activate your paintbrush tool over here you get all these different things like your diameter how big your brush is your angle the roundness so thinner more oval or more circular hardness which is the feather of the brush and then the spacing is you know how much space between when you're going like this and painting so you can also set these to work for like a Wacom tablet so like if you have pen brush you can settle these to pen pressure or whatever whatever you need to do and uh you know, has some real brush dynamics like you're actually painting. All right, starting off, let's just do right here. Let's go in and hit Control Y to make a new solid. Just bring that up and we're going to double click this. This is our composition window and then this is going to be our layer window. We're going to make a mask on this window right here. And you're going to see this is going to be our alpha channel and this will be our RGB layer or our RGB channel. So let's activate our paintbrush tool again and we're gonna look here and bring some of this stuff down diameter down okay we're gonna look at this we got our opacity of our paint we have the flow we have our color pickers and then we have our modes let's check out our modes and they're just you know regular transfer modes blending modes like you see in Photoshop and After Effects and if you're you know down here and you activate this over here you got modes all these this one has a little bit more than this one over here but you know everything you need for a real paintbrush all right next the one thing that might be you know a little confusing to do if you don't use this very often is your channel so your RGBA channel is going to write on both the RGB and the A the RGB being this and the A being the alpha channel if you select RGB it's only going to write on the RGB channel and then also if you hit A it's only going to write on the alpha channel but now you're looking at this and you're like why is this looking like it's racing well if you ever use the quick mask tool in Photoshop it's kind of like that how you can like paint on and off your masks so if you have black as your mask or as your alpha channel you will be able to erase your RGB layer and then you can also you know, or well, you can switch this around, and then you can paint it back on. So a nice little thing if you're trying to get some really precise masks, especially with um, uh, like feathering or blurs or something like that, that can be kind of useful. All right, let's erase this really quick. We're gonna make another one. Control Y, Enter, double click. Nice reset right there. Okay. Now we're going to look at, I'm going to make this a little bit more round because it's bugging me. Uh, we're going to look at our durations here. So first we'll look at constant. So if we want to set this all the way down here and we do want to do just a nice little brush stroke, set this back to RGBA and it's bam. There's our brush stroke. You're going to look here, hit UU and you're going to see your paint and your brush stroke right here. Now if you're going to make another brush stroke, you would see that what it does is it erases that one brush stroke that you made before and then replaces it with uh, a path that the brush stroke is going to go along. So you see that. Um, what you want to look at is when you have it on constant, if you say have your current time indicator here at 10 seconds and you do another one of these, it's going to erase what you had before and then it's going to start it from exactly where this current time indicator is until the end of your composition. So if you want something to show up on the entire uh, composition or the entire layer or the entire layer size from here to here, make sure it's all the way down here depending on you know where you're at. So next what we can look at is the right on which is kind of cool. Let's erase this and then we're going to look at our right on. So note how fast I go. So we're going to go really, 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 really slow and fast, and slow and fast. Okay. You're going to see it starts from where the current time indicator is and you're going to see these keyframes. 
These keyframes are the start and the end of this animation. If you look at it on just the layer panel, you're not going to see the animation in real time. It's just going to kind of like update. But if you look at it over here on this, you'll see it actually takes into, into context how fast you move. See, there it goes fast, and then slow, and then fast. So this actually takes into context how fast your mouse is moving and how much pressure is on it. And this also works with like your brush dynamic, dynamics and stuff like that. All right, let's erase that one. And we're going to look at single frame. Single frame and custom are kind of the same thing. If you do a single frame, like all this, it's only going to happen on this one frame that you're on right now. So it's gone and it's there. But if you move up to here and then you zoom in really far, you're going to see it's only on one frame. So this is good if you're painting like frame by frame roto type stuff, you'd be wanting to use this. Now if you go to custom, you can set this slider here to go to wherever you want. So one frame or you know a thousand frames. And then if you hit that, you're going to see it goes for however long. Or if you only want, say, 10 frames, type in 10, and you go bam, and then 10 frames. That's all you got right there. So that is these right here. It's pretty simple, uh, you know, pretty simple stuff to figure out with the paint palette. I mean, I kind of had to look through some of these things because I didn't really understand them when I decided to make this tutorial, and I'm kind of glad I did because I'm hoping that I'm helping some of you guys out there that were a little confused about, you know, why you had constant on and you wanted to paint on your layer, but it only, you know, happened from like here on, or it didn't happen from there to the beginning. So anyways, my name is Topher Welsh. Sorry for the rambling. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I'm hoping to do a lot more very soon, but I will see you guys in the next quick tip tutorial. I'll see you guys later. Bye.